Hi everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill and welcome back to my vegetable garden. Boy, the weather has finally warmed up and I get to plant all of my warm season vegetable crops. I'm so excited. So I've got all kinds of tips to share with you. So come on along with me and watch what I'm planting. In my garden columns and on my blog, I mention how I start my corn, beans and peas indoors and I know a lot of folks think you can't do that because these plants do not tolerate being transplanted but actually that's a myth and I'll explain why in just a moment. I start them early for two reasons. One is I want to get the best possible germination and you're going to get that under the controlled indoor conditions. The second reason is because I want to get these plants off to the best possible start before they even hit the garden. So what I use is something called a deep root insert and you can see they've got really large wide cells which is perfect for these large rooted veggies and I'm just using a screwdriver to carefully lift them out of each cell I'm never pulling them out by their stems and then I'm using this little tool here called a dibble or a dibber and you just make a nice hole plop the seedling in and then compress the soil around the plant just so there aren't any air pockets around the roots. I'll tell you what, I have been doing this for years. I think it works great. I've never had a problem. Now this soil in this bed was already wet. We've had quite a lot of rain recently. And I also watered these ahead of time just so they're not going to be stressed from this transplanting process. But it works great. I heartily recommend it, especially if you have problems where maybe birds are pecking at freshly sprouted seeds. These taller plants are less likely to be bothered. Now that the seedlings are all in, I had a couple more things I wanted to share with you. Certainly the last step is to water them in well and that really minimizes the chance for transplant shock. But what I did before these guys were even transplanted is I hardened them off for a week before planting day today. And so I set them out on our deck for an hour about a week ago, brought them back inside, set them out for two hours the next day, brought them back inside, three hours the next day and so on. And so they are now acclimated to both the weather and the intensity of the sunlight. Another thing is that I just fertilized them with some fish fertilizer yesterday. So they don't need any fertilizer yet, but I might wait like about a week to 10 days and give them another shot of it because of course corn needs quite a lot of nitrogen so that's very important. And the last thing I wanted to point out is how closely I plant them together. So you might notice these are basically one foot apart in all directions. Now I know that sounds crazy because conventional wisdom says that you plant corn in rows that are three feet apart and the plants 18 to 24 inches apart within the rows. Well, in my raised beds, I'm able to plant them a foot apart in all directions and they will grow to normal size and do just fine. I made sure there's plenty of nutrients in the soil and so they are going to do great. The next part of my planting project takes place inside of this hoop house. It covers two raised beds and it's something that we built a few years ago, mainly for the purpose of my being able to grow cold tolerant veggies during the winter months. But there's no point in having it sit idle the rest of the year, right? So we use it this time of year to grow heat loving veggies. This year it's going to be eggplants and peppers. Now you're probably noticing that there's some plastic on these beds. This is called SCRM tomato mulch and this one is called solar mulch. The main purpose is to heat up the soil and that's what heat loving veggies really need. The other thing that's a side benefit is that I don't have to weed these beds because there's no place for the weeds to come up, which is great. Now underneath this plastic mulch, which I've got pinned down, 
is our watering system. That's really important. Either you need some kind of a drip system underneath them or just a soaker hose, but something so that the water can get to the plants. So let me show you how you plant in this. Maybe it'll be something that you might want to try later. This is one of the eggplants I've grown from seed and this area in this red plastic mulch is where they're going to be planted. Now planting through mulch is a bit of a nuisance but it's well worth it because you'll have much better productivity. All you do is you cut an X into the mulch. That's for your planting hole and I'm just moving that out of the way for the time being. Here's the messy part. <laughs> I'm just going to dig a hole that is the size of the pot. Let's see if it's big enough. Yep, that's good. I'm going to gently knock the plant out of its pot. I do not see any circling roots, so that's good. It goes into the hole and then I'm going to carefully plant it by compressing the soil around it so that there's no air pockets around the roots. I know I harp on that, but it's really important. And then once it's planted, I'm just going to close up this little opening here. Now remember I mentioned that our drip irrigation system is underneath the plastic, so the plants will get watered just fine. This bed is for the pumpkin plants and they need quite a lot of room. So I'm going to plant them in a bit of a zigzag pattern. I'll put five plants in here and I'm hoping that that's enough room for them. You'll notice I have the green solar mulch on the bed again. That is for increasing the soil temperature, which I think the plants will really like. The planting method is exactly the same as with the eggplants and the peppers. You just cut an X into the plastic, make your hole, plant your plant, kind of close up the opening a little bit at the best you can. And if you have labels, you put the labels in so you remember what you planted. This is my summer squash bed, and I'll bet most of you have not heard of trombone-shaped zucchini. This is a vining zucchini that grows up a support rather than a bush type that we're all so familiar with. The name of this variety is Trombetta di Albenga, but there are other types of trombone-shaped zucchini varieties out there. I need to use a support for it, and so I have this sheet of four foot by eight foot concrete reinforcing wire, which is very durable and handy to have around the garden. I'm using some old metal stakes to support it so that it's nice and sturdy. And I'll tell you what, these guys, they grow in the goofiest shapes, and they taste like artichoke hearts. I think they're absolutely delicious. So if you haven't tried these, you absolutely have to. Now, the other thing I'm doing is I have some bush type zucchinis that I'm gonna grow on the opposite side of the bed, and that is Claramore. Now, Claramore is a pale skinned green zucchini that we grew last year. It's tender, it's delicious, it's very prolific. So I heartily recommend that variety as well. If you cannot find Claramore, the other one that I love is Romanesco. You'll notice that there isn't any solar mulch on this bed. That's because for years I have tested growing zucchini and other types of summer squash with the mulch and without, and I have found that it makes no difference whatsoever in their productivity. So I have decided there's no point in putting it on. So here's one of my trombone zucchini seedlings. Just gonna put it in. And then fill in the soil around the seedling. You notice I have it pretty close to the wire grid and that's so that it doesn't have far to reach in order to get up the support. I've got five of these seedlings and that is okay since they're going up more than out.
There's one other tip I wanted to give you, and that has to do with planting any member of the cucurbit family. And that would be things like melons, cucumbers, squash, and pumpkins. Something I learned last year is that pill bugs, those tiny little crawling insects, have a penchant for nibbling on the stems of cucurbits because they are very tender. Now I don't want you to think that pill bugs are really bad critters because actually they're very benign insects other than this one little flaw in their personality. So what I have done is I purchased something that's called diatomaceous earth. It's a flower-like substance and I'm just going to sprinkle it around the base of each seedling and that is to keep the insects from crossing it. What it's made of is the fossilized remains of algae and it has tiny sharp edges that will cut into an insect's skin it, that causes them to dehydrate and die. And so this is protecting these little seedlings. I don't need to worry about pill bugs for any other aspect of gardening, but this is one thing that I definitely think is worth doing if you have this problem. I have a couple things I wanted to clarify about diatomaceous earth. It is a completely natural ingredient, so it is organic, and it works really well against certain types of insects. For me, I have also tried it against slugs to keep them away from broccoli and cabbage plants, and that has worked really well too. You can find this at garden centers just about everywhere, so it's very easy to locate. Boy, it's been a long day of planting, but we're finally to my favorite part, which is putting the tomato plants in. That's always a milestone, isn't it? I wanted to show you the support setup that we have before it gets covered with plants. What we're using are two more sheets of those concrete reinforcing wires that are four feet tall by eight feet long. And then we pounded in some really heavy duty fence posts to support them with. I do not want to have the risk of them toppling over in a nasty windstorm. So I'm going to plant these. You'll notice that I have the red plastic mulch on here for increasing the soil temperature. Now this red plastic mulch is interesting because it is in the color spectrum that reflects more light up into the plant and that makes them more productive. So that's very cool. Alrighty, so I'm going to plant them the normal way, just like I showed you in last week's video. I'm going to remove some of the lowest branches on each plant. I'm going to cut an X into the plastic, plant them deeply, and then some of them are going to need a little bit of support because they've gotten a little leggy while they've been biding their time in my greenhouse waiting to be planted. Now that all of the tomato plants are in, I wanted to mention two ways that you can keep them supported as they grow. One way is quite simple. You actually weave them in and out of this wire grid. And it works pretty well, but I've found that most of the plants tend to need more support than that. So what I do is I take some jute twine, I tie off a piece at the far end of this first section, and then I weave it in and out between all the plants and the wire about this level and just catch them all so that they are snug against the wire. I'll tie it off here, start up a new line, and do the exact same thing again and tie it off there. Every time they grow and they start to lean away from this grid, I run another line of jute, and that works really great. Well, I'm going to water these in now, which is always the most important last step of planting. I hope that you've had fun watching this video today, and I'll meet you back here in a week. Mm -hmm.